Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about adding a hot spare drive to an existing volume in FreeNAS. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we'll be working together on this journey. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, first we're going to cover why you should use a hot spare. Well, now in the event you have a drive failure, your remaining drive, assuming you're running, well, I'm going to say RAID 5 because that's just the terminology I've worked with over years. If you're running RAID 5 or later, or if it's RAID Z1, you can suffer a single drive failure and be fine. But the problem is you're now vulnerable. If you lose a, an additional drive or a second drive, however you want to talk about it, you've now lost all the data. So a hot spare is a drive that stands ready to step in and start having... I'm going to say rebuilding, but the understand the proper term now is resilvering so that it can step in for that fail drive. All this can happen while you don't have to take the server down or order a hard drive, then take it down, replace the drive, because I didn't go for a hot spare cage system because that was a lot of money, and I really wasn't sure how much I would need it because I've only, well, I can think I've only ever had one drive fail on me in, in quite a few years. So that's why you'd want to have a hot spare because that way it doesn't add to the amount of storage you've got, but it steps in for a failed drive and then lets you go back to that level of protection as quickly as the resilvering or rebuilding process occurs. So we're next going to go on to how to add a hot spare and then we're pretty much done. So let's switch over to my FreeNAS server. Now, right now, I've kept it uh, in just a pre-boot stage because any time that you add a drive to the system, it's always good to know that it's seen by the motherboard instead of you just assuming it's going to be there, which in this case, if you look down here under the uh, system, under, under the drives, rather under SATA, and there's a P5. Now, if you notice, the drive description is different from all the other drives. I'm trying a different drive this time. There's some of the HP refurbished drives on Amazon that supposedly have a good warranty to them. They, they are used drive. I don't know how you can really recondition them, but I thought it would be a good chance to give us a try in a non-critical environment. And it's always good when you have this screen up, and this is when you have to go into it. It won't automatically go by default. Now, I've got a gigabyte motherboard, as you can see. And this is something I have to manually go into, but it's always good once in a while to go through and see what it thinks is going on. So see, all four fans are there. Three of the two, let's see, yeah, three of those fans are actually on the CPU side. And once you see how the airflow works in the cabinet, you'll understand why. And then another fan is just to pull air through where the hard drive cages are. You see all the memories there. So you know what? We're good to go. And yes. So we're going to go ahead and let it start booting up here. If you go back to the, when I showed you the different drive. Now, this is the drive. Come on. Here we go. Had to hit the button right. This is the drive I'm going with. Now, this was available off Amazon at the time I got this for about $37. It's a two terabyte drive because I wanted to make sure that I had a drive that matched the size of the existing volume that I had created. Now you can go with a larger drive as far as I know, but you can't go with a smaller drive because then it really couldn't be a hot spare and stand in. All right, now we're going to get it added to the YouTube volume or YouTube pool as a spare drive. So let's go under here. We'll go to storage pools and we'll click on the little gear icon and select extend. And we will click Add Spare. So we will check that drive. We will go to Spare VDEV. All right, and we will click Extend. Added disk or erase, which is good. 
Okay, confirm. Extend pool. And now let's go take a look and see what... Okay, so it hasn't really changed. Okay, the, the healthy space, I mean the, the total free space did not change. And if we go to gear icon, status, and okay, it's showing as a spare drive, it's showing it online. So if for some reason you wanted to take that spare away, such as say you're going to three terabyte drives and your spare is a two, well, then you'd probably want to change out your uh, spare drive at some point. So, okay, there's how you would remove it. Okay, so it does show a spare. So we're showing the three drives, showing it a spare. And that's really all that uh, is going to have to be done at this point. So you can see it's, it's a good thing to consider doing even if you've got a hot plug drive cage system to go to. This still having a hot spare, okay, it costs you one drive. It's not going to add to your storage. But in the event you do have a drive failure, then you're going to be your exposure to having a second drive fail and taking you down is going to be less. Now, you have the option of going to a higher version of, of Z-RAID so that you can have like a second parity drive. So you could sustain two drives lost. Or you can go to this. Have a way to, to be covered. And especially as you use a system more and more, or if you decide to go for some of the drives that are refurbished, renewed, server pulls, pick your uh, your verbiage on that one, then you've got an idea of, of how to avoid from being uh, taken offline or possibly losing some files. Now, a RAID system is not a backup system. Now, where I will say, yeah, but, is if you have multiple network attached storage or storage area networks, and at that point, then you would have protection from one RAID failing, but again, it's, you know, I, I've had take backup systems in the past, and that's yet another thing to maintain, where if I just have multiple uh, NASs, then, you know, isn't that accomplishing the same person? And if you differ with me on that, please let me know. I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, because I'm just documenting my journey with free NAS as we move along the process, so that I can keep from losing some things that are important to me. So if you're watching this on YouTube, and you probably are at this point, then you're going to start seeing some videos on the screen that are similar to what you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Take care.